Income tax 2023-2024, dividend income tax software example. Get ready and some coffee so we can do some income tax interpretation with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problem using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting with Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid the dang taxman, living in 90210 Beverly Hills. Back to a single filer to start off with, starting with 100,000 W-2 income, standard deduction 13,850 to get us to the taxable income 86,150, mirroring that in our income tax formula within Excel, 100,000 income, 13,850 standard deduction, taxable income, 86,150, letting the software, Lacert, calculate the tax, starting at 14,266, which we can see on page two of Lacert. Here it is. Now, we're going to be looking at dividend income this time, which is part of, of course, the income line item. But we also have to keep in mind the other impact of it breaking out qualified dividends and non-qualified dividends because that can have an impact on the tax calculation, which is something we don't often see when we're double checking because we're kind of reliant on the software to do that calculation. But if we want to understand the difference between qualified dividends and normal or ordinary dividends, we've got to dig into the tax calculation. So you can see before we add the dividends, we have our normal progressive rates. So the taxable income in within these thresholds, as we've discussed before, are being taxed at these rates. Now with the dividends, if they want to incentivize investments, say in United States companies, they might try to give a favorable tax rate. Well, how can they give a favorable tax rate if some people are taxed at higher rates than other people's? Well, that means they're going to have to come up with a whole nother progressive tax system, which will basically always result in the dividend income for qualified dividend being lower than what it would be under ordinary income tax rates. And so it gets a little messy once again in this tax calculation area. That said, let's go back to page one. We're looking at the uh, dividend income. So that's going to be on line 3A and B, where we have the qualified dividends and the ordinary dividends. Note the structure here that the dividends that are going to go here on 3B will include the qualified dividends. In other words, the ordinary dividends, if the ordinary dividends is $1,000 and the qualified dividends is $800, then it's, it's not like we have $1,800 of dividends. It's that 800 of the 1,000 are uh, qualified dividends. Why would it be structured that way? Well, that makes it so that this outer column we can add up and still add up to taxable income, whether the dividends be ordinary dividends or qualified dividends, because they're going to be taxed either way. The problem is that we then have to break up this number, 86,150, between the qualified dividends and the other income. In other words, the income tax at ordinary income rates and the income tax at the qualified rates and then apply the appropriate tax on the table, which again is something the software will typically do. All right, so usually you'll get a form. It might not look exactly like this because you're gonna get it from financial institutions, but the, the name of the, or the numbering of the cells will be the same. The primary two cells we will look at is uh, 1A and 1B, where we have the total ordinary dividends and the qualified dividends. So let's go back on over. 
And let's say that we go to this trustee drop down and we go to dividends. And I'm just going to say this comes from, let's just say like E Trade or something. So we're going to imagine that's the, the institution that we're, the financial institution we're investing with. They give us a 1099 summarizing the dividends. Let's say that the ordinary dividends is in box uh, one, $1,000. Let's just use that example. Qualified dividends was $800. All right, so what happens? We pull it over then to our form 1040, and we can see that it populates in the qualified dividends 800, but the total is 1,000. It's not 1,800, it's just uh, the 1,000, and 800 of that 1,000 is qualified. We can see here that they give us a nice little worksheet as well. Then I can see that there's nothing included in terms of Schedule B yet. Schedule B will be imported if certain conditions are met, such as, for example, you have uh, over 1,500. So notice that both qualified and unqualified, the 1,000 is being included in the 1,100 for the adjusted gross income. If I mirror that in our software on this side, we can say, okay, and let's first put my actual tax. Here's my tax calculation right now, 14266. And now let's make the change. I'm going to go here. And let's say last time I added interest, let's add another section to my general income tab for dividends. So I'm going to move the total down. I'm just going to say, let's move this down. And let's say this is going to be dividend income. And we'll make that black and white. We'll go to the home tab, font group, making it black and white. I'm going to make this then blue. And so we're going to go to do, making it blue and bordered. And then I'll move this down one more space here. And I'm going to say total dividend income. And let's make this, pull this out. So I'm going to say this has come from E-Trade. And we said the total is 1,000. And I'll put the qualified over here like we did with the interest. So I'm just going to put the qualified was 800. Just so I can note that in my data input. So I'll just put that there. And then I'll sum this up equals the sum. Du, 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 du. Actually, I need to put this in the outer column. Let's put this over here. Equals the sum. Du, 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 du. So I'm not including this 800 here because the 1000 includes the, the 800. And then my total income is now the 100 W2, the interest income, nothing's in it, down to the dividend income. So now we have another 1100 that pulls into page one. There's the 1100 in our formula. We still have the 13850 standard deduction gets us the taxable income. 87,150. If I go back on over here, we can see that we have the 87,150. If I then go to page two, then we now have the tax at the 14,430 calculated by the software, 14,430. And so I can look at the difference between that two, those two, and say, okay, what's the difference between the tax? It's 164 dollars. What what did I change? Well, I put another thousand dollars. So I put another thousand dollars in. So the tax rate that I had is this divided by this on that thousand dollars, right? If that thousand dollars got taxed at the 15% uh, or 16% basically. Uh, and so, and what really happened is 800 of it, right? We had 800 got taxed at the fat favorable rate, which I believe is gonna be 15%. And then, and then the rest of it, the 200, got taxed at ordinary income, right? So I can say, okay, let's make this a percent home tab number percent, 15%, that's 800 times 15. And then the 200, if I go back on over and look at my, my summary, my marginal tax rate, the highest tax rate is uh, uh, the 22%. So 22%, 0.22, this is this, times this and so this plus this is going to be my 164 see so normally i don't recalculate that to show that uh you know because i'm just doing the data input but when we're discussing with a taxpayer what does it mean to be a qualified versus non-qualified 
you get a you get a, this favorable tax bracket situation and if you got taxed at ordinary income the added amount of ta- of income you had would be t- taxed at the highest bracket 22 percent but the the qualified dividends will typically have a favorable tax in this case at the 15 percent now here's your tables uh that will help you to kind of determine that but the general idea would be whatever your highest tax bracket is if it's going to be a qualified dividend you'll typically get a benefit for it so if here's the filing statuses if your income is below these thresholds for the filing statuses they're going to have to drop it down to basically zero so you don't get taxed on them because your your marginal tax rate is fairly low then if you go to these income thresholds then you're, you have a tax rate over 15 percent and therefore to give you a, t- a beneficial tax bracket they're going to have to drop it down to 15 percent instead of your ordinary income marginal or highest tax rate that's going to be the uh, general idea but of course internally the software basically does that for us so if i go back on over we can see on page number two uh, then now the calculation of the tax is a bit more complex right because now they're gonna have to break out you can see this 800 i won't go through the whole thing but they basically are breaking out the 800 so they can apply the tax at the 120 15 percent you can see that they're populating here and it gets to be a big long ugly uh mess so there is that now if we bring the the dividends up above the fifteen thousand, we'll have to add the schedule b so let's just do another one and say let's say we had another one for i don't know uh b of a let's say this was uh sixteen thousand and let's say fifteen thousand of it was uh all uh, was uh, or was qualified so if i go back on over now we have the qualified dividends up to the 15800 the total dividends are at uh, 17000 and we now have the schedule b that has now been populated part 1 as we saw before is interest part 2 ordinary dividends the irs wanting to know who you got the money from note that although the dividends could still be fairly low in dollar amount because you need to do this over 1500 they are dividends which is kind of like interest it's the earnings that are being distributed to you and therefore uh if even if you have a fairly low amount of dividends that means you probably are holding on to a significant amount of stock because because usually they might put the money back into the business a lot of companies don't give high dividends because they might be reinvesting it so having dividends and interest even a fairly low dollar amounts means that you've got significant investments generally right so in any case that pulls in over to the first page if we were to mirror that in our worksheet over here we'd say okay here's another b of a and we said this was uh dividends we said sixteen thousand and fifteen thousand is that what we did uh or is that that's too high i, I went too high there didn't i so 12, 17 that's what i did I, that's what i did so that comes out to 17 going to page one 1, uh, 117,000 117,000 minus the 13,850 gets us to the 103 150 page two calculating the tax now at the 16,900 so now we have the 16,900 now note that you could have some of these other boxes sometimes come into play like total capital gain uh under recap 150 section 12 da, 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 ordin- ordinary uh dividends under section so on non-dividend distributions so you can and then the foreign taxes sometimes comes into play as well uh depending on your investments so so usually the data input is fairly straightforward in software for that and the most common one is probably going to have this uh if i say let's make another one for like vanguard vanguard and say we had 2000 all of it's here and then we had capital gain capital gain distribution is is a common one and that's going to be the generally the idea is that possibly you have a mutual fund for example and the mutual fund actually sold some of your stocks because they're managing the mutual fund you didn't sell the mutual fund but the mutual fund is holding on to stocks and bonds and within the fund they sold 
uh, they sold something and they had a capital gain, which now they're distributing to people that becomes taxable, right? So now we have to say, okay, what if like 500 was in there? Then I can go back on up. And notice you, you down here, most software actually has the line items. So this is 2B, uh, two, you know, uh, 2A, 2B, 2C that line up to the boxes so that at least you can plug that information into the software and then work backwards to try to understand and make sure the software is doing the data input correctly. So software is quite useful with that. But uh, oftentimes you're going to have to explain what's going on to two people and you want to double check the software. And so if I go back on over and say, OK, now the tricky thing with that is that now I had to put it in place here, but it's actually creating a schedule D or it's pulling in or it's coming in to the capital gains. So now I've got basically capital gain distribution which oftentimes is reported on the Schedule D if you needed the worksheet. We'll talk about that later. The, the reason that becomes an issue with data input, though, is because oftentimes you try to organize all of your worksheets and you're trying to organize when you're double checking your numbers, the dividend worksheets from the interest worksheets from the capital gains distributions and so on. And it's difficult to do that when you have capital gains on the 1099 div, because when you're trying to when you're trying to double check your capital gains, then you have to take into account, oh, wait, there's this added thing that's on the dividend, which was a gain distribution on the dividend when you're trying to double check your numbers, possibly populating that information into Excel to double check uh, your numbers. So, so remember that the 1099 div, the 1099 interest, and the capital gain distributions often are done by the same financial institutions because people have their investments in uh, cash in the checking account where they might have interest, bonds, and stocks. Also possibly with the same financial institution and the interest represents income from bonds and uh, money and holding CDs, savings accounts. The dividend represents income from capital gains. So you might have one statement that basically has all that stuff included uh, within it. Also, if you have flow through entities like a partnership or or uh, uh, an S corporation, then even if you don't do the partnership or S corporation, you might just say, I'll, I, I will input the K-1s or something like that if someone else does the partnership or S corporation. We have courses on partnership or S corp if you want to look at that in more detail, but it's a whole thing uh, in and of itself. We will touch on some of the stuff for a sole proprietorship with a Schedule C. But if you have, if you have that, if you have a, a K-1, then again, entering the K-1 is usually fairly straightforward because all the boxes line up pretty nicely. But then you, again, could have income related to dividends or capital gains and whatnot that are flowing through from a different source other than the normal 1099 div. So that's the general, so that's the general scenario with the dividends.